Good evening, fellow humans. All right, here we go. Next instalment. So we're going to do the metal this time. So we're just going to work on his knee pads here. All right, now these knee pads have um, already been given a base coat of lead belcher or whatever equivalent, and just a thin wash of. Um, Null oil, which I've allowed to puddle only in the gaps, but not anywhere else. All right, so no flat surfaces are allowed to puddle, only valleys. Okay, um, again, like with all the other parts, I'm sure that's something you can handle. All right, now <clears throat> what have we got here? Lead belcher, Starmore silver, Abaddon black, dried bark, um, and there we go. I just want you to, to acknowledge, you know, we've done a few videos now um, and I've kept this same palette just for you guys. I just want you to acknowledge how much paint I've actually used. You know, it's really not a lot so far. Really not a lot at all. You know, and go back through the videos and see how much water I've used as well. Yeah, and again, we find it's more than you think for the amount of paint that I've used there. All right. But anyway, here we go. So, next video. I'll put the lamp on the opposite side this time, so it's a little bit more difficult for me to see properly, but hopefully, um, <clears throat> better so you can see consistencies happening here. Because no matter where I put the lamp, this bloom of light is pretty much always, always here. There seems to be nothing I can do to, to escape the thing. So, anyway. There's... There you go. There's the knees, where they're at now. So what we're going to do... Is we get... Oops. That's much too less. Yeah. All we're going to do... So again, note how much I water these down. It can be different every time. I'm gonna put a nice solid coat on the top there, water it down a bit, and then some nice thin coats up towards that solid. Yeah, so we're getting <clears throat> a more matte finish here where it's darker, going up to a more shiny finish here where it's lighter. Yeah, I'm just gonna do the same on each side. All <clears throat> for all these parts essentially I don't know if you noticed but for these for these stages here I actually, I actually uh, do reduce the consistency a little bit and reduce it enough on this so a little bit of water just to break up that, that edge there we go don't worry if the edge isn't um, broken up before it's dry because Go back with these in a, in a little bit. There we go. So we'll line up, thin down, going up. Oh, a bit too much on my brush there. That's why I slowed down and just kind of bounce there just to soak up what was on the model. Because uh, yeah, it happens. And 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 this is the thing, right? A lot of people get miffed off with mistakes. Don't learn how they get caused and learn how they get fixed and then mistakes aren't a bother so then with that attitude well no mistake is a bother then it's all a good opportunity to develop yourself to get better mistakes are not excuse that car going by yeah mistakes um, aren't a reason that you're not very good at painting Mistakes are actually a reason to get better at painting. Not because you ooh, made a mistake, it's like, oh, here's an opportunity here. I can learn something about how paint behaves. Honestly, cultivate that attitude. Cultivate it. Right, there we go. So, let's just get it to focus. Yeah. Again, nothing too difficult there. You know, having this shadow here 
creates a lot of overexposure. I want to go like this, change to my old lighting ways, actually get a better image of the dude. Um, hmm, decisions, decisions. Lights, eh? Lights, lights, lights. Anyway, enough farting around there. Let's get the next, the next stage in. So, <clears throat> drive back, have it on black, about, Fifty-fifty in color. So, so that was they were about the same amounts of paint. And it's ended up not right. So I want it fifty-fifty in color, not amounts. There you go. Brilliant. I get that so you can see that color. Let's pull it out a bit and so you can see it. Yeah. Right, okay, so with this stage, let's go back over there. It's actually just much better for me to paint. I'm going to get in the gaps. And I'll make this entire model appear much crisper. Yeah. I'm actually going to get in right up the top as well. Oh, it actually doesn't really need it too much on this right now. When the seas dry, I'll do them all again if they if it looks like they need it. There we go. Brilliant. And then a little bit more water. Let me just thin this down a little bit more. All right, and now um, remember I said not to worry if there any blend or smoothness in here hasn't worked. Well, this is your chance just to smooth that out a little bit. So you can see I've got this kind of dark shape here where it's not blended smoothly. I'm going to go over all this, leading, leaving the puddle in there. And we'll blend that. So let's just give this a quick blow. the difference between the left knee and the right knee. Yeah. So while the, this our left knee, yeah, while that dries, I'm just gonna put a bit in on the other one. You might notice I've changed the order in which I've done things on this knee for no reason other than I just wanted to. It's no biggie if you do. Alright, brilliant. So, as you can see, we've still got this little patch here. So make sure everything's still quite wet on the palette. There you go. Still quite wet on the palette. With that okay getting rid of these we'll get on to the last step now storm or silver there you go check out the consistency yeah the opacity 
get the top edge in yeah get the middle edge in I actually did I put a bottom edge on the other ones yeah I did hopefully get a bottom edge in oops wobbled a little bit there so I have to go back in and neaten that up the shade brilliant bit of white on that metallics tend to have this little or these metallics anyway tend to have a urge to dry out slightly faster than others so a little bit more conscious about how I manage it. Oops, a bit heavy handed there, my brush. And then going right. this down a little bit more now up into so we've got this kind of like L shape here yeah across and down the center I'm just gonna push some color there just to make this look appear, appear a bit more like a bloom highlight as opposed to just a line highlight there we go now that's pretty much knees I'll go around and obviously do the rest of the uh, armor like that if I wanted to add some little nicks and scratches then I just do lots of the tiniest lines possible when I say lots I don't really mean lots I mean some sometimes little dots sometimes where there's less of a blend on something I'll actually kind of expand that out into a scratch so the eye picks up on the scratch of it as opposed to the uh, non-blend of it not that anybody will ever go oh that blend's not very good especially not on like an army standard model there you go so you can see the uh, lines of damage there some of them might be a bit crude for some standards but for these guys right now I'm happy with that there you go. Let's get some of this actually. I said I was a bit heavy handed down here. There you go. Just put that shade back in. And that's that fixed. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There we go. Hi guys, there we have it. <clears throat> so, a lot of these colours in each of these videos so far has already started off with two stages, generally a base coat and a wash type stage. <clears throat> um, some of you might be sharp eyed and sharp minded enough to ask the question, did I even need all those stages? The answer is kind of no. Yeah, don't need that overwash stage because we're adding this shade in here. You know, the truth of the matter is, is I actually, and I think I, I disclosed this with the, in the shoe video. It was just a mistake or just something I did and then in hindsight didn't like and really what I'm doing is going back over everything and correcting it. But I don't have to go back over it to a point where it's a full repaint. I'm just using that layer below just as a as a useful springboard, yeah, to make whatever adjustments. So this is hopefully just encouraging you not to freak out about your mistakes, whether they're technical ones when you draw a line, or color, or material choice ones, like where you put the wrong color in the wrong place, or a color you don't like, or a wash where a paint would have done, for example. Do you see what I mean? So. 
don't know, really, whatever your mistakes are, apart from something real drastic like dropping your model or um, stabbing yourself in the finger or literally just getting so much paint on your model that it, it is dead. Like, there's nothing, there's really any such thing as a, a true mistake, though we might use that word a lot. So, yeah, dudes. Have fun, and I shall see you on the flip side.